Hello, my name is Kat and welcome to my first actual gaming video being put on YouTube. Um, I will be playing Boulder's Gate 3, which I played probably about a year ago. Um, it's still in early access, but I know they've added a bunch of stuff to the game. I recently upgraded my computer so it can actually play the game. So I just figured what better way to do a first gaming video than to try Boulder's Gate. I don't know how the sound will be at the moment, so from what I can see, it looks like it'll be fine. But I may have to adjust, I may not, I may scrap this whole video, who knows. So I guess let's just jump into it. I, because I got a new computer, none of my saves is here, none of my previous game. So I'll be starting right from scratch. So we'll just jump into a new game. Dead three. Val, well, okay. <clears throat> so again, most of this I have seen, but um, never this night. Yeah. See how the game goes. Oh. Oh, it's squishy. Okay. So I love that this is part of the D and D um, world. And it has the same rules as uh, D and D Five E. I have not been able to play a game myself, but I'm currently looking for my gaming group i have a couple leads and i'm going to try out a group uh next coming week but you know we'll go day by day oh god i don't remember it looking this oh Oh, eyeball. Yep, yeah, no. Oh my god, I can see it. My other monitor. <laughs> I have a thing with eyeballs. I can't do it. Eyeballs creep me out. They're slimy. They're very pretty, but they're slimy. Ooh, he's got the telekinesis. I think that's the right word. Oh, oh, oh no. Okay, it's done. We're good. Oh lord. My dog's staring at me like I'm crazy, so this is great. All right, so build a character. This was a lot less when I played last time. You'll hear me refer back to when I played last time multiple times. I'm sorry, kind of have to deal with it. Um, but let's create our character. Now, normally I would go for a drow. I really like the backstory of the dark elves, and um, I, I really enjoy that kind of everyone has a thing against them and then they're coming out like more into the world the drixto urban is what started that with me i really enjoyed the uh books from the homeland series and just all the different series of them um, i have a few of them on my bookshelf i'm in the process of trying to collect more my mother got me into them and i just absolutely love the dark elf Side. However, I think I might go a different way this time. <clears throat> so let's see. What's my... Oh, so none of these are available yet, but we just have to do a custom origin, which that was how it was when I was playing the first time. So that's not a big deal. Tav and having a character named Tav, that's fine. Normally I'd put it, actually no, I'm going to put the normal name I use. When I can select a name, I use the name Kit. So that's what I will use. So now we select the background. So we have Acolyte. You have spent your life in service to a temple, learning sacred rites and providing sacrifices to the god or gods that you worship. Serving the gods and discovering their sacred work will guide you to greatness. Background features instant in instant wow insight proficiency and religion proficiency 
So this is one that I would never naturally go towards myself um, in life in general. Everyone can believe what they would like, but um, I wouldn't normally go to this side. So charlatan, you're an expert in manipulation, prone to exaggeration, and more than happy to profit from it. Bending the truth and turning allies against each other will lead to greater success down the road. So it's kind of like you're picking which way you want to play the game. So it's kind of like in D&D where your characters can be different from one to the next. This is the same idea. And it also dictates how you would play the game and the decisions that you make. So that's pretty cool. I really enjoy games with that. Um, again, I would not go the charlatan route normally, but it is intriguing. And in the future, I may have to do a character with that mindset in my mind but this background features deception proficiency sleight of hand for people so pretty cool kind of along the same lines as a rogue i would think um yeah criminal you have a history of breaking the law and survive by leveraging less than legal connections profiting from the criminal enterprise will lead to greater opportunities in the future background features include deception proficiency and stealth proficiency. So obviously the background features co correlate with what the actual backstory is. So that's pretty cool. So that's the criminal. Entertainer. You live to sway and subvert your audience, engaging common crowds and high society alike. Uh, preserving art and bringing joy to the hapless and downtrodden heightens your charismatic aura. Background features, aerobic proficiency, and performance proficiency, which I can see becoming handy in situations where you may have to act a certain way to gain access to certain areas. Again, this one wouldn't really be my area either. However, I do know that um, I had once created a character for D&D. Again, never played. Created characters, but never played. <coughs> um... And being a bard was one of the areas where I debated creating my character too. So that would be an area of interest for me. Um, but maybe not for this playthrough. A folk hero. You're a champion of the common people. Challenging tyrants and monsters to protect the helpless. Saving innocence in imminent danger. Make your legend grow. Background features. Animal handling proficiency and survival proficiency. This one would be right up my natural inclination alley to go. Um, most characters I would create for any type of game, like a role-playing type, I would kind of lean towards wanting to help people, wanting to have something to do with animals, like a druid or something along those lines. So that is an area where I am going to keep in mind. Uh, guild Artisan. So your skill in a particular... I can speak English, I swear. Your skill in a particular craft has earned you membership in the Mercantile Guild, offering privileges and protection while engaging in your art. Repairing and discovering rare crafts will bring new inspiration. So the background features on this is you have an insight proficiency and a persuasion proficiency. Um, not really my cup of tea either. I don't like being kind of restricted in what I'm doing. So having kind of like a mastership of one area, I it's not really what I like. I like having like multiple different areas where I'm good. But again, I don't know how this game brings those in. Never played this one. Um, when I played it before, I did a dark elf and a criminal background, I believe. So we'll see what I choose this time. Uh, noble, definitely not me. Uh, you were raised in a family among the social elite, accustomed to power and privilege. Accumulating renown, power, and loyalty will raise your status. Background features, you have a history proficiency and a persuasion proficiency. Not my cup of tea. Um, Outlander. You grew up in the wild, learning to survive far from the comforts of civilization. Surviving unusual hazards of the wild will enhance your prow prowess and understanding. 
The background features of this one are athletic proficiency and survival proficiency. So this one's also a contender. I kind of like the idea of playing a character that doesn't really care about the civilization and the common comforts of home. So that is a really good one that I might try. Save. <clears throat> you are curious and well-read with an unending thirst for knowledge. Learning about rare lore of the world will inspire you and put this knowledge to greater purpose. Background features for this one are arcana proficiency and history proficiency. This one, not really where I would be looking for. I'm, um, I love to read and I love learning things, but the information never sticks to me. So, um, I'm more of a fictional book reader as opposed to a histories and learning about the world. I'm more interested in high fantasy, um, which I know doesn't make sense because I'm playing a high fantasy game, so the history would be high fantasy. But in general, I'm I am making parallels to how my personality is now. Soldier, you are trained in battlefield tactics and combat. Having served in the military, mercenary company or officer court. Show smart tactics and bravery on the battlefield to enhance your prowess. Background features, athletics proficiency and intimidation proficiency. Not a soldier. I don't take orders well. I don't enjoy listening and having other people tell me what I can and cannot do. A soldier would not be me. Urchin. After surviving a poor and bleak childhood, you know how to make the most out of very little. Using your street smart bolsters your spirit for the journey ahead. Uh, features on this one are sleight of hand and stealth proficiency. So that one is interesting. <clears throat> I really like that background. I actually think I may end up using this one um, just because I have a soft spot for kids who grow up with very little and how they grow up as they go. Um, my current job is within child protection so it is very fitting um accolade okay so we've now gone through them all i think i'm gonna choose the urchin um just because that really sings to me and for my first like good playthrough of this game i would like to play it how i feel like i would naturally be inclined to play it as opposed to trying to make myself make decisions that don't really feel 100% correct to me. So that's what I'll do. So I'm going to have the sleight of hand proficiency and stealth proficiency. Awesome. So let's go to the next step, which is race. So this one, we have multiple different choices. I believe with every major update they do, they do add a new race or two. So it's really good. Like they have a good selection right now, but I do know that they've spoken about coming out right now we have an elf a tiefling a drow human Githyaki. pronunciation is not my strong suit so i'm apologize if i'm butchering these and you're all like oh god but even if someone tells me how to pronounce them and i hear it multiple times will not change the fact that i will pronounce it wrong myself um we also have dwarf half elf halfling and no so off the bat i would normally just go for a drow I wouldn't really even look at the other options, but I don't want to go for drow this time because like I said, when I did my first playthrough, I did drow and I would like to try a little bit more of a different approach while still staying true to myself. So let's read through them. We have elf. Uh, you get different sub races as well. So when you go through, you can choose between them all. I'm not going to go over them all, but we have a high elf. I'll read the names, but I'm not going to read all of the attributes and features or anything like that. Only the ones that I'm actually considering. So we have a high elf, we have a wood elf, and that's it. <laughs> uh, we have the two, which is fine. And there's just different areas where they excel between the two. So next we have a tiefling. A uh, tiefling is a race in this world bound to Nisus, the deepest layer of hells. These tieflings inherit the ability to wield fire and darkness from the archdevil Astromedus 
infernal bloodline. So that's kind of interesting. I don't think I've ever played as one of these characters. That's the Asmodeus tiefling. And then there's the Mephiles tiefling. I am, this is not gonna be good. You can all roast me if anybody actually wants to leave comments. Um, it kind of looks like one's like super dark and this one's a little bit lighter. So descendant from the arch devil Mephiles. These tieflings are gifted with a particular affinity for arcane magic. Okay, so these are more magic wielding um, tieflings, which is kind of cool. Uh, race features, they have some different things in a hat trip, which just means it's something they can use kind of right off the bat. And you can use it outside of the actual battles or anything like that, I believe, <laughs> if I remember correctly. <clears throat> And then there's the drow. Like I said, I've played as the drow the first time. Um, they have a couple different. So there's the two. So the loth horn drow is raised by the loth loth cult in the city of Mez. Yeah, that city name. These drows exude the virtues of their corrupt and merciless, merciless goddess. Loth markers her followers with bright red eyes so the under dark will lean to fear the drow learn to fear the drow on sight i remember correctly um when you're playing as this character you get um good like improved vision at night during the day you can get more tired your character is less able to see and pick out things but it's still in general a really good character to play and then there's the Celadrine drow. Drows are the result of an ancient schism between the elven deities, those names, the latter's treachery drove the drow into the Underdark where they splintered into the where warring factions. Celadrine drow can be found seeking allies from all over Faroon, aiming to settle their conflict below and each other by way of any means. So this is what I played before. Um, when I played, I think there was only the one option. We didn't have two different Dark Elves, but this is the character that I would have played the first round. Then we have humans. Um, there's no sub races to choose from. You just have the basic human. Uh, there is the Githyanki, which is really pretty. I like the accents on the body and everything they are peerless warriors from the astral plane known for their legendary silver blades and red dragon mount they seek the total destruction of mind flayers whose ancient empire enslaved the githraki for millennia okay so that's pretty cool i also really enjoy the hair there so i may end up playing as this character we also have dwarf which uh, is a fun character to play as it's one of the ones i've actually debated on playing as well so there's i think two yeah the gold dwarf and shield dwarf so each of them has a little bit different i won't go through them but uh they're often coffining characters they kind of go with their gut feelings um and they value family ritual and practice. and then the shield one shield dwarves survived the long fall from grace surrendering many of their ancient kingdoms and wars with goblins and orcs these losses have led to this cynical mindset yet shield dwarves will endure anything and restore their ancestral homeland okay so that's a pretty cool little backstory half elf is what i originally envisioned playing i wanted to do a wood elf and i wanted to do the um the backstory that was about sort of like growing up in the wild away from civilization which is, is that the one i picked i think that's the one i picked uh urchin no i did the bleak child okay <clears throat> so for the half elf you can choose between being a High elf, a wood elf, or a drow. So you can be a half elf of any three of the different options. 
each of them coming with their own strengths and um, differences. Again, like I said, I originally kind of wanted to play as the wood elf and have like this whole, I love the world. And, uh, I have like little animal friends, stuff like that, but uh, I don't know that I'm gonna play like that now. I like the urchin um, backstory, so eh. We also have a halfling, which I think there's two. Yeah, there's a light foot and a strong heart. So again, there's the little differences between the two. It's usually with regard to the backstory. And then we have gnomes, which I think are the newest addition to the actual race selection. So I know nothing about this. Um, there's three different gnome versions to choose from. So we have the forest gnome, which uh, they are smaller than their cousins and twice as reclusive. Forest gnomes are a rare sight. They master magic and craftsmanship in their distant idea idyllic grove. Idyllic. Wow. I swear I'm usually not that bad. I do have a bit of a headache, but I swear. Um, so this is one of the ones that I would have really leaned towards playing is the forest gnome. I kind of like the idea of having that um, background of being not always included in society and stuff like that. That would have been my first one to go to. This one I just kind of think of as a dark elf meet um, a dwarf or halfling, uh, more guarded than their surface cousins. Deep gnomes survive in the underdark with dark vision and soulful smell. So yes, they are along the lines of a dark elf just in the gnome family and then a rock gnome which is probably the most known one in the universe rock gnomes are the most common there we go i would have just read for two seconds on fern surface named as such for the hardiness and affinity for metal so those are all the options for the uh, characters Based on the fact that I did the origin being a uh, bleak childhood and had to learn how to make you know the most out of what they had using street smarts, I think I'm gonna go with the half elf to be honest. And then I'm gonna do the wood elf. Then do I change the back? The Outlander. Yeah, I think I'm going to do this one. I want to play the way I want to play. <laughs> so I'm going to do a Wood Elf. Um, they gain an extra point in Dexterity and Wisdom. So that comes into play in um, when you're doing save, save rolls and stuff like that. So, uh, that's what I'm going to create, and it shows you here the strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. And then it shows like athletics. We're proficient in athletics, self, animal handling, which is one of the ones I wanted to explore, perception, and survival. So I'm happy with that. Now we move on to appearance. So. There's a few different things to choose from. They give male and female within this uh, these options, so you just kind of got to click for it. So you can hear it. Where to next? Or hmm. what was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. Hells. Be wary. Yeah. So there's really Except only two voices. Yeah, those wretched things. I kind of like that one. And then their face. You can zoom in, and then pick the head. Each of them have just subtle differences. They don't look very happy. Too. The head one, I think, is my favorite. You can choose skin color, so they give you what would be in the race's um, wheelhouse, but you can also just decide, well, I don't want to be that, and you can click and it'll give you all. So that's kind of a good um, set there, but I'm gonna kind of, I think I'm gonna go a little pale. 
um, I like to kind of have them a little bit different than what the computer generates is what I should have. Eye color, I always love the eye color to be a little bit different, so I usually pick like purple. Purple or light purple. Ooh. I think I like the lighter purple. You could almost think of it as gray, but it is purple. And hairstyle. Okay, this is where you get to have a little bit more fun. So that's 12A. 13A is the shorter kind of messy cut, which I really like. Actually, let's pick the color. I, I like to have the color first and then pick the hair color that looks best. So obviously I have purple hair. I like having funky colors. I do understand that back in this time frame wouldn't necessarily work like that. You want to be able to be stealthy with like darker hair, but still I kind of like having the fun colored hair and purple is my favorite color so I think I'm gonna go with purple now do I do light or do I do dark kind of like the dark yeah I like that. okay that's cute but I kind of like the idea of the hair covering the ears a little bit because it can kind of hide some of the ancestry if you're trying to look like a different type of person than what you are. You can throw your hair up and be like, oh, I'm just a little elf that's minding my own business. Um, that does not do that, but it is a very nice hair style. They're all like up here. It doesn't hide the ears, but it hides better. I like the hair. to talk about every hairstyle. I know. <laughs> um, okay. I think I like that like messy kind of an even cut to that like sport scene. Where where did it go? Oh, it was A. I didn't realize it's just a little variation on it. This one. I like this. It covers the ears, but they're still pointy. That's nice. Um, obviously, my character doesn't have any facial hair because she is um, female and female presenting. So I will not have any facial hair. But it's kind of cool that you have the option to give your character facial hair regardless of gender, which is really cool. Hair color we chose, and now do we want to put in some fun little... Ooh. Oh, that's gray. Cool. I can dig that. But I also really like that because it gives it just a little bit of lighter purple. Yeah. I like that. And then tattoos. Tattoos I kind of usually go with the more subtle. I did really like the bird. That one. It's just a subtle little bird on the face. I want to be really dark. Makeup. I really don't care so much for the makeup. Something subtle like that to kind of go with the hair, maybe? I don't know. <clears throat> Glass. Now, this is where we kind of pick out what their job is in the world. We got Barbarian, which is a strong 
I'm just gonna beat everything up type of character. We got the bard, like I spoke about. That is the fun-loving um, artist. We got the cleric, which is very much a cleric. <laughs> they represent the gods. We got the druid, which would be more the half-elf that I chose kind of way. Fighter, we got a ranger. We got the rogue, which is I've said before is always my favorite to play. I like having kind of range um, attacks. I'm not really big on being a tank or anything. We have the sorcerer, we have the warlock, and the wizard. So I think I'm kind of going between a ranger or a druid. Druids channel the elemental forces of nature, they're a deep and shaped animals. Mystery of Wild Shape allows them to transform into beasts from all over the realms. So we automatically get two cats, cantrip, and then spells. Or we have a ranger who is unrivaled scout and tracker. Deep connection with nature in order to hunt their favorite, favorite prey. Studying the tactics and abilities of certain creatures gifted you a set of abilities that is useful in a variety of situations. Bounty Hunter, Keeper of the Veil, Magic Breaker, Ranger Knight, or Sant Santified Stalker. Sanctified Stalker. Game Proficiency Investigation, creatures you hit with ensuing strike have disadvantage on saving throws. The history of bottom and soul crackers, the Hmm. I think I would do down. Here's traveling the world has made you particularly attuned to beast or a depth of surviving in certain environments. We have a beast tamer. We have a strong bond with animals. You can cast find familiar as a ritual. Urban tracker, an expert in navigating the wild in the city, you can gain flight of pants. Wasteland wanderer cold. Wasteland wanderer fire. Wasteland wanderer poison. I think I'm gonna stick with beast tamer on it. Like I said, I have a thing with animals. I like it. We have a spell, find familiar. And then we have this. Yeah, this is the one. Built. Okay. The proficiency bonus is two. Built. Proficiency. Animal handling is the proficiency. Athletic, investigation, animal handling, nature, and skills and help with I don't think I have to pick anything in there. And then abilities, assign ability points. Okay, so it automatically gave me my ability points out there. I'm going to leave it as is. Recommended. Tell me, who do you dream of at night? Ooh, I get to. Dream of at night to attract you. Ooh, so I can choose who I'm attracted to. Interesting. I'm gonna say human.
because you wouldn't want to go with a half elf. I'm gonna say human woman. Where are where are you? What where are you? I wanna change the color. Blue. I think we're good. Now I'm gonna hit venture forth. I will get to the first save point and then I am done for this video. So we'll get to there. That's that weird guy, that thing in my eyeball. Ugh, that's so funny. And also to the other girl too. His friends are dead. His friend is dead. Oh. Why don't I remember this? This was the part that my computer couldn't handle last time. So it just kind of skipped over this. These are the defenders. The dragon mount. woke up as well. Obviously I just spent all that time making my character. They're not gonna kill her off. But dang, beautiful graphic.
believe this is where our story begins. schedule yet. I'm not quite there. I just thought I'd play a game, record it, and see if I end up uploading it. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will continue playing the game next time.